Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA, and Jim Rocket Promotion. Tony and Friends know they win. Look, Shivani's back again. World title split off center stage. Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro. New World Order and the Crow. Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ, Vinny Mac, Simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad. Not your classy podcast. Watch a lot, try not to laugh. Lois rules cat back. This wasn't the initial plan. Tom He's a good looking man. Quad like Bill, make a chair. Tommy, you come over here. What happened, Win? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring. And here's your co host. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened, Win? And of course, we couldn't be here without the master of ceremonies. The voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Conrad, I'm doing great. Hope everyone's doing fine. I'm having a great time in my life right now, even though it's a very difficult time for all of us. Hope everybody is safe. I do want to start out by saying this. Mm. Uh, Lois will not uh, be here today to be able to give us our countdown because she's in a lot of pain. Yeah, uh, we should give everybody the, the backstory here because, uh, I'm sure some of our listeners don't follow you on Twitter and you've blocked about half of them. Uh, mm-hmm. but, uh, very recently, uh, I guess it was about 10 days ago. You, uh, you took to Twitter to announce that there was a bit of an accident in the Shivani household. We, uh, started riding bicycles together. She told me, she said, I want to ride a bike with you. And I said, are you sure? She said, yes. I said, when was the last time you rode a bicycle? She said, age 14. I said, all right, let's give it a shot. Got her a bike, went out one day. She did. Okay. Uh, she, I, I, when I go out on a bicycle, Conrad, I really do ride a lot. I usually ride between 15 and 20 miles. She couldn't go that far. So Second time out, we're on this, uh, not a paved, but a concrete trail, a lot of people on it. And I told her, yeah, you got to stay on the trail, but she tried to swerve around some people. She went off the trail. She fell to the right, fell back onto the trail and landed on the concrete and broke her arm, Mm. her right arm. Uh, and it was funny. Arn Anderson said to me, he said, okay, I got a question for you. I said, what? He said, did she want to go biking or did you force her to go on that bike? I said, she wanted to go. He said, well, then 
you just saved your life. Because if you would have forced her to go on that bike and she would have fallen. You're, you're dead. Yeah. You'd be dead the rest of your life. So, so anyway, she is, uh, she is convalescing right now. She's doing fine. We've had some, uh, some of our low key big hogs and glass bottom boat riders reach out to her, which I really appreciate. She I appreciate your kindness. And, um, going down to Jacksonville, like I've been doing now and then has been worth it. <laughs> uh, because she, uh, she's had her cousin stay with her while I'm down there. So, so there you go. So that's it. That's the story. Well, I guess I should congratulate you here at the top of the show. You guys uh, did a tremendous job of keeping us all entertained. Of course, uh, double or nothing is in the books and it looked a lot different than the prior double or nothing, but, uh, you know, it's a weird time and you guys tried to make the most of it. And I think on that front, you did a great job and I'm sure there'll be much to debate and critique and break down and cuss and discuss. That's not really what we do, but when we have something that, uh, is a little unique and certainly like we had this weekend with live wrestling and it was a pay-per-view and there were no fans. I just felt like it was worth mentioning because good or bad. That'll probably be a show you remember for the rest of your life, right, Tony? Yeah, uh, I, for many reasons. Uh, number one, because uh, the stadium match was unlike anything I've ever seen and, pro- and obviously unlike anything that's ever been done, at least uh, that I've been involved with. That's number one. And number two is it kind of connected the dots for me on a personal level. And the reason I'm saying that is that it was a year ago from that show thereabouts where you had uh, Starcast in Vegas and I went to my first, uh, AEW show, which in many ways, and I mentioned this on the broadcast, it was a one year anniversary of AEW. And I, I went from sitting at front row ringside, thanks to a ticket that you purchased to being a part of the broadcast team. How about that? Yeah. And so it, it kind of connected the dots for me. And obviously you are, a gigantic part of that. So it, th- there was, there was some sort of emotion about that. I wish we could have done it in Las Vegas. Hopefully we will be able to do it uh, next year. And, uh, it was, it was nice. The Las Vegas people reached out to us and said, Hey, we miss you guys. Wish you were here. They're good partners, good people to be, you know, to work with. So it's, uh, it was, uh, it was a very, uh, in many ways for me, a very emotional night that I was a part of this and, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, you, you really get a sense of even more so when there's no fans, you get a, you get a sense of feeling that you really accomplished something because of how different it is and how difficult it is and how everybody comes together and everybody works as a team. It was, it was a great feeling there. So yeah, I'm sure people are going to debate that. Uh, I, I did the live show afterwards, the the live online show, and there was some debate going on. And I did my best to, yeah. you know, you can you can debate, but I did my best to qual to squash any uh, any trolls. Well, let's let's just address that at the top. We have to do shit differently right now. You know, we're in we're I hate the word because we've used it so much lately, but we're in unprecedented times. So people are trying to just reach way down deep and just try something new because it, we're all just sort of limping through this. Like I was talking to Eric Bischoff about this the other day, the footage and the things that are happening in these empty arena matches, like just week to week on TV, those will be erased from history. As soon as all of this is back to normal, like we will never refer back to and see compilations of, of just eons of empty arena matches, because that's not what makes wrestling fun. It's an interactive sport. You need that fan interaction. You need that direct response. And, and with a void of that, you you're left with, okay, we've got to, we've got to try something new and you guys have tried something new and WWE has tried something new and listen, in hindsight, maybe we'll look back and we'll say, Oh, that was not the best, but it was the best we could come up with in these quote unquote unprecedented times. And I just appreciate that you guys worked hard as a crew to give us who are all still sort of stuck at home, something to fucking do something to look forward to, you know, in the absence of live sports and everything else, we've had one UFC and we've had some wrestling and that's pretty cool. Yeah. And people are not, not many people, but a handful of people are just absolutely so mean online Yeah, to, to the point to where I would love 
to personally meet these people. I kick their ass. No, no, not kick their ass. Take a baseball bat and just bludgeon their face. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, before we do that, let's uh, tell everybody what we've got coming up on the show because I'd like to get through these ad reads today before you do a little stint <laughs> at the Crossbar Hotel. Was that cool? <laughs> yeah, we're going to go back to uh, to January of uh, two thousand three, correct? Yeah, and what I, what I'm so excited about is we have talked about this a lot that. And, and even when you said, you know, Hey, just a year ago, I saw my first AEW show at double or nothing. Coincidentally, so did everyone else. That was the first AEW show, but still you're on the other side of the guardrail. And now a year later, bam, you're, I mean, I wouldn't say you're the voice of the show. Cause I think you said 12 words on the broadcast, but I heard all 12 and it was cool to hear your voice on a big show and 27, yeah, 27 words. My apologies. Um, but when we get back in our way back machine, you know, this all didn't just end when WCW went down in March of 2001. And once upon a time, you flirted with the idea of doing something and made a one-off of what wound up being a one-off appearance on January 29th, 2003 for impact wrestling. This is your only night ever doing business with TNA. Um, and it's. It's an interesting show for you to say the least, because we don't get regular Tony and I don't want to give any spoilers. We're going to watch this show together. And by the way, this is a new thing for us here on the show. We should mention right at the top. We've always referred you to the WWE network. Uh, well, I have discovered the greatness that is impact plus, uh, and I'm not being paid to say that. I just feel like, uh, it's maybe the most underutilized service of its type. There is an absolute ton of content and a ton of really great stuff from great performers through the years. It's a great value. It's even cheaper than the WWE network. You can download it on your Apple TV, which is what I've done. But Tony and I are both going to be using our web browsers today. It's impactplus.tv. And if you sign up there, uh, and we'll actually post a link, uh, where you can get this when we have, uh, the show posted, you'll be able to find it on Twitter. And of course, over on ad free shows and patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. We just want to make sure you have the direct link because if you sign up for the service, a, I think you're going to get the best bang for your buck in wrestling besides the WWE network. And it's even cheaper than that one. So it's really cool. And there's a ton of content, but secondly, uh, this is going to be something we're going to do in a lot here on the show. There is some gold in these here heels and I won't give you any spoilers, but I showed Cassio and Dave Silva, some of that over the weekend. And they lost their mind about little things that I'm going to make you watch in the future. Cause they too hadn't seen it. So this will be fun for a lot of us. It's, you know, a lot of us Tony here on the show, we watch these really iconic WWE shows that happened once you quit <coughs> watching wrestling. And we all sort of marvel at how in the world did Tony not see this? And it's fun to watch something with you that you've never seen for the very first time. But now I think a lot of our listeners are going to see some of this impact stuff for the very first time. And we get to do the first together. That should be kind of fun. I'm really excited about this. I may not sound it, but I am. I, because this was, well, we'll get into the story about me being a part of this and I'm looking forward to seeing who's wrestling on this show. This was done, I think in Nashville, Tennessee at the uh, fairgrounds. That's exactly right. January 29th, 2003. This is the 30th pay-per-view. So if you're on impact plus look for NWA dash TNA PPV number three, zero 30, it was January 29th, 2003. And, uh, Shivani, I gotta be honest with you. If Lois can't give us a countdown, I feel like it should be another Shivani. Can you count us in? I'm the only one left right now in a way in, uh, three, two, one play. Here we see Loki stomp into the ring. One of my absolute favorites from the era. There's the Elix Skipper. Wow. We, we all know about his LinkedIn. And there's Christopher Daniels. And check my him out here. God. America's most wanted. James Storm on the left. Chris Harris on the right. There's a lot of talent here in this opening segment. Of course, your referee there now is a referee with WWE. Here his TNA name was Rudy Charles. Man, how spectacular was low key back in the day? He was something else. This, this from the word go, it blows me away. Yeah. Your old pal, Christopher Daniels now part of SCU here. He's a part of SEX. I didn't even realize Christopher Daniel, 
Is this uh, this is not the this is the open of the show? This okay, is the open it. of the show. It's a recap of how SEX, Loki, and Alex Skipper won your NWA tag team titles the prior week. We're gonna track the open here. Track it. <laughs> So there you go. There's sort of your overarching theme that Raven has stolen the belt. Will the rightful owner, Jeff Jarrett regain possession and we're off to the races. And there we see Raven doing a promo sporting mm. the NWA world title. And as an old timer yourself, uh, it probably looks a little weird to you that Raven is wearing Ric Flair and Harley races belt. Yeah. That's, that's very bizarre. Uh, you know what else is bizarre? What's that? And I'm, I'm I guess they're going to be in the show. But I work with low key at MLW. Yeah. And I, I'm working with Christopher Daniels. I had no idea I had met them that night. Yeah. I think Isn't that something? Be, I think you're going to be surprised with a lot on this show. And this is one of the things I'm most excited about because, you know, a lot of our, our listeners either weren't watching this every week because the concept, I guess we should just sort of tell the story is that TNA was going to be the first quote unquote major wrestling company. And they were going to be number two to WWE without a TV deal, which at the time was unheard of. So what, how are they doing that? Well, the plan was we're going to run Wednesday night because SmackDown had been on Thursdays. And of course, Monday nights belong to Monday night raw. So we're going to run and we don't want to compete with, you know, local football and house shows and everything, concerts and bars on Friday. So that leaves Wednesday and they ran Wednesday pay-per-views at nine 99. So $9 and 99 cents. And it would be on Wednesdays for a two hour show. So sort of like a, an in your house, old school WWE, a two hour pay-per-view, but on Wednesday nights for 10 bucks. And it looks like based on the early projections that the office received that they were going to be making money hand over fist. And then they come to find out that. Someone had done them dirty and not got given them accurate data. So they were booking and spending as if those were the real numbers only to come to find out that was not accurate. And then they looked for a bailout with one of the richest men in the state and most powerful men in the state of Alabama, Richard Scrucci, who at the time was the CEO of health South. And then of course it comes out that health South had cooked the books to the, one of the biggest frauds in us history. And, uh, the story of TNA will continue and, uh, eventually they meet an ad agency and, uh, a part of that ad agency is Dixie Carter comes to find out Dixie's parents are billionaires. Well, old Jed's a millionaire and Jeff Jarrett's wrestling dreams continue. And here we are right in the middle of it, 30 weeks in. And remember now, Jeff Jarrett has essentially created his own promotion here out of fucking necessity. When, uh, he fucked over Vince McMahon and held him up for more money. Uh, he thought he had a golden parachute with WCW and Ted Turner's money and his old pal, Vince Russo promising him the world title. Of course, Vince Russo doesn't have the best experience there. He's out rather quickly. WCW circles, the drain and the moment that the simulcast happens, there's one wrestler that is publicly fired by Vince McMahon and his name is Jeff Jarrett. Uh, so Jeff got together with his dad. They both invested all their money, pushed their chips in and said, Hey, we're going to make a go of it. And that's what we're seeing now. Sort of, uh, willing it into existence. That is a, that is a bizarre and interesting story about wrestling it cooking the books and not telling everybody how much money they were and weren't making and. Jeff Jarrett running his own promotion. Jerry Jarrett was in the backstage area. I've I've told the story before that Jerry's in the backstage area and I'm watching the broadcast on one of these small monitors and they've got a speaker next to it. I'm listening to it and it's Mike today. And I think Don West, right? Doing the commentary. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And I'm listening to them 
Now I've been out of wrestling, what, about two years now. Yeah. So I'm listening to them really shout and scream about every spot that they see, Yeah. you know, trying to sell oversell as we like to call it. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm trying to listen to them and Jerry Jarrett is in my ear just yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember thinking at that, oh, Vince Russo makes, makes an, uh, an appearance. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I, I, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. I wrestling, I want to, I want to try something else. I want to move on. I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm not that old yet. I want to try to uh, make my life uh, different and go up and Lois had told me after uh, WCW went down, went down, she said, this was, this is the best opportunity you've ever had because you and I both know because the, uh, the money was great and the benefits were wonderful. God, Conrad, they, the, the, the benefits from WCW were the 401 K for every dollar you put in, they, they ponied up a dollar and a half. The, the benefits were unbelievable. So anyway, Lois told me, she said, there had been no way you were going to leave WCW as bad as it was. And as, as much as you hated it, you weren't going to leave because it was just, it was just too good to leave. And she said, now you've been forced to leave. And now, and she's never worried about money. Uh, she, and thank God for that. She said, now you've been forced to leave. So this is the best thing ever happened to you. So with that in mind and knowing that I wanted to change it, I'm sitting there listening to Jerry Jarrett, Washington A and Don West. As I remember my mind scream about every lousy spot that was out there. And I'm thinking, I just don't want to do this shit anymore. I, and that's when this night is when I discovered, I really discovered I didn't want to do wrestling anymore. And so this is, uh, how would you describe Don West? Look here. <laughs> Uh, like a young Jim Hurd. The way Jim Hurd wore red silky satin <laughs> shit like this. No, I just say that because uh, Don had that look on his face that Hurd always had on his face. By the way, Don, Sir? Don, even though a lot of people think he doesn't keep up with wrestling, he listens to our podcast every week. Mm, love Don West, man. Have so much fun with him. You know, you've had him at Starcast. He's just uh, can't do it without him. He's just too much, buddy. It's just too much. And Mike Tanay missing in action, man. MIA missing in action. I, I just, I don't, I, I, when we were, uh, and I'll talk about Vince Russo here in a minute as we see him. When we were in Salt Lake City, our last great live show before the pandemic, I got in touch with Mike via text because we text periodically. And I said, Hey, love to have you here. He said, Well, he, he returned my text. He said, well, I, uh, I live 300 miles away in South Utah, but we sent pictures of the grandkids back and forth and that's it. But, but Mike is completely kind of like what I did after this, right? Removed himself from wrestling. Yeah. He's, uh, he's pulled the Shivani. He has indeed Shivani. Look at, look at dusty Rhodes putting on a show here. Let's not track it. That man has to say might be wrong. Wrestling, as I know it, very well might be dead and buried in the damn grave. Put it here. You're no. kidding. You are no different than Jeff Jarrett. You are no different from... You see David Flair over Vince Russo's shoulder? You fucking A, I see him. First thing I thought of was punch him in the fucking nose. Out the door, Percy. I heard the stories about you talking behind my back. You fat piece of sh- What? Oh, oh, wait a minute. They got that soapbox. No. Oh. oh, my God. Look at the fat man now. You go get your gear. I'll put on my sh- And let's you- make it an eight-man. We win that eight-man match. Next week, right here, all titles are on the line. And I get to pick the challenges. Getting in the ring. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Wait, Wait a minute. minute. Put Mr. Red. Oh, no, no, no. No. Oh, my God. It's the Russian nightmare. It's Nikita Kolov. A four-quarter match. 
Can you imagine what all's going on? I mean, Dusty Rhodes, Nikita Koloff, that was Road Warrior Hawk, David Flair, uh, Rowdy Piper. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of people on this show. Yeah, it means a lot of people are owed some money. <laughs> well, they were get, they were getting it. Well, yeah. I just think it's yeah, at this point it's there's not a lot of opportunity. Let's go back to tracking. Between stand next to the NWA, stand next to Jeff Jarrett, stand next to TNA. You can take a step back, or you can take a step into that dressing room. Hold on, go into the room. You've got to be kidding me. Is he with Russo, or is he his own man? All I've got left is Jeff Jarrett. But I just want you to remember your heritage, Jeff. You go do what you do best, I'm going to do what I do best. And I'm kicking ass. Damn it, this numbers oh, game is just too much. Oh, no, look at oh, the... Oh, God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So there you go. There's the backstory. Raven has interrupted Jeff Jarrett's celebration after it looks like the NWA had pulled it out. Raven now siding with Vince Russo. He's stolen the NWA world title. So the stage is set. We're on a collision course for Raven and Jeff Jarrett. I'm, uh, what do you think about girls in cages? Uh, well, TNA meant tits and ass, didn't it back then? No, no, no. Total nonstop action. No, it meant tits and ass. Oh man. Amazing red. Have you seen this guy before? Amazing red. Yeah. Um, is he somebody that I know I'm about? No, he's not, but he is okay. somebody you should know. He is one of the more underrated performers in history. He never got a super big break. He became a, a big star in the underground tape trading world, uh, working with promotions in New York. But the first time he was a regular in what I would call a, I don't know, a larger platform was ring of honor. And so now he's uh it's now that he's a standout for ring of honor. He's got an opportunity to be on pay-per-view here against one of the former flying Elvises or Hey Estrada. I just, I'm, I'm completely lost here. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you this though. Amazing red. Seriously. Yeah. One of the more influential, athletic, innovative he trained so many guys that, you know, I won't make a list, but I'll tell you off air. Okay. Well, he, he kind of looks like one, two, three kid here in a way, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, but this is another evolution of one, two, three kid. Wow. This is a matrix style wrestler before that was the thing. <laughs> Appreciate too. What we're seeing is seven, more than 17 years old. And he looks about 17 in the face. You know, this match, it, this match is so fast. It almost looks like it's going in double speed. Yeah. By the way, he's not an old fellow. Uh, even no. though I said that this was 17 years ago, he's only 38 now. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't guess I'm betraying any confidences, but he's who helped break in private party. Well, I think maybe, uh, I think private party said something about him on one of their videos. Maybe they Absol talked oh, about no, it. Yeah. I forget that you're involved in the production end of all those videos. Yeah. They've definitely paid homage to him. Right. I mean, he, if he, he was born 10 years too soon. Yeah. I mean, if he was 28 right now, instead of 38, he would be on TV every Wednesday night. No question. I, mean, I, I keep, I, I, I think about what we saw on the, on the video and we saw Nikita, we saw bullet, Bob Armstrong, Scott Armstrong. And then uh, their brother, of course, road dog, he's here road dog. There. Right. I mean, listen, Just, they, they, um, they, um, they had a loaded card and they had a lot of talent, but the, the reality is they didn't get the right business model up front. 
they had uh, sort of over, under and overestimated or greatly overestimated what the appetite would be for a weekly pay-per-view with no TV. But when they got what were very inflated numbers, they stayed the course and they kept digging a bigger and bigger and bigger hole. The trick with, you know, running pay-per-view too, is you have to pay all these overhead costs up front, but you don't actually get your money for four to six months. Uh, so by the time yeah. they found out what they were really getting, it was already too late. They had already overspent and sort of screwed the pooch, but in O2, you know, there is no, there is no ECW. There is no WCW it's WWE or, or, or Japan. And it's not like Japan is having their strongest years ever at this point. Uh, ring of honor is still just uh, a fledgling organization. And just, just tape trading. They don't have a TV deal. So this is as big time as it gets. If you can't work for Vince McMahon. And of course, Jeff tries to mitigate some of those costs and Hey, let's just be based out of Nashville and let's run the fairgrounds and, and paint it up and get a sweetheart, good deal and have some consistency. And that's what they do here. And this is referred, this building is referred to as the asylum and they did a great job with it, but behind the scenes. There's a lot of strife. I mean, I know people remember hearing that there were sort of two camps divided there at the end of Dixie Carter's run, but that's not what we're even talking about here. We're talking about from the very, very beginning, Jeff Jarrett and his dad, Jerry, the original two sort of founding partners, um, really disagreed about whether or not to involve Vince Russo. Jerry Mm -hmm. Jarrett felt it very strongly that Vince Russo should not be a part of the booking committee and, and, and should not be able to write TV and didn't think that his brand or style of, um, storylines were going to be conducive for their business. And obviously Jeff felt differently because Vince Russo is the person who made Jeff Jarrett a world champion. And maybe he felt like he had to have his back because he had his before who knows. Right. But either way, I see that. there was a huge falling out in the end. Um, it came to a point where Jeff and Jerry didn't speak for years. Even when mm. Jeff lost his wife of many years, I don't think him and Jerry were even speaking then. So major personal fallout behind the scenes at the top of the, uh, TNA management. So Vince Russo became the wedge between father and son. Wow. Yep. Yeah legacy and again that's not necessarily russo's fault i'm not saying russo did anything there no right i, I agree who just disagreed i you know i just felt like i needed to clarify because somebody was going to say oh are you saying no i'm not saying that i'm just they disagreed i mean they could have disagreed about you know where the cowboys america's team it doesn't matter what they disagreed about they disagreed and that was it But you kids are having a very good match. And I, and I say that because they're doing some spectacular stuff, but they're not overdoing it. How about that move? Code red. Did he invent that? Yes. First time I saw that was, was I mean, first time anybody saw that was him. Wow. Kids are very good. I didn't want, I didn't, uh, Didn't, I didn't really watch the matches. I just kind of glanced at them. Yeah. And here's the thing. If you, if you never worked at the fairgrounds, if you were never quote unquote, part of the show, the background or the, the backstage area was, uh, well, less than gr- glamorous. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of the guys just wound up going out that little side door and hanging out there on the side. Right. Um, so yeah, it's not like there's a big talent viewing area with a bunch of big screens sitting around oh, catering. Shit. That's not what this is. I hope they replay that maneuver. I don't, I've never, I've never seen that. There's a lot of stuff, man, that you can go back and watch. How about above average Mike Sanders coming into the ring? Old WCW star war. Let's track it. And he's going to Estrada. Well, let's see what he's got to say now. Hey, four hands. I made you an offer last week, okay? You don't need these people. You need to come on over to our side, because I think you got exactly what it takes. Look, I need an answer. Today. Oh, 
fucking disco inferno. Oh, fuck. This is where we are. We got disco inferno, by the way, uh, Jorge Estrada. He, uh, I think his last shot here with TNA is, um, March and then he's done. Hmm. Uh, I was on the ride down. I, we came from Atlanta. We had a, uh, a minivan and I think Russo drove it or maybe disco dro- drove it. And I remember Russo and disco were in the van with, and I was there and that's how I got there. So I knew, and I'm sure there were some other people in the van that maybe that, but that, those are the two I remember. Bullet Bob Armstrong in the back. What do you think he's saying right now? Well, sweetheart, I, uh, I just want to know, are we going to smoke a doobie a little bit later? You and me? I mean, I got, I got some tucked away in this cowboy. Yeah, baby. We're going to smoke some dope and my sons are here with me. And what? Uh, hey, motherfucker. Where my doobie? Where my doobie? I want to know where my doobie. And if you see my dad, who the fuck is that? Yeah, that's Ron Killings, our truth, K Quick. Our truth. 24 7 champion. <laughs> and there's Jeremy Borash, the, uh, one of the geniuses behind the Boneheart Boneyard match. Yeah. And all of the delete, delete shit that me and you used to enjoy at the end of Impact before mm-hmm. it became a AEW property. What do you think about the zooming in on the butt cheeks? I love it. I'm for it. How about SEX coming through a separate entrance? Oh, look who it is. Yeah. That's David Flair. Guess what he's got in there? I'm going to track yeah. it. Have these thieves led by Russo steal that championship belt away from him. He wants Raven in the ring, and he's made that very clear to NWA rep Bob Armstrong in the back. And his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 212 pounds, Jerry. Ain't that some shit? Look at JL, man. One of the greatest wrestlers of all times, kids wrestling. Another one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. (laughs) Oh man. Oh man. All right. Let me me ask you if you could have Jerry Lynn's career and become mm -hmm. world champion for ECW and, uh, you know, just have all the accolades that he's had through the years. Yes. WWE champ, a lot heavyweight champion, all that stuff. Or, uh, you could spend the weekend with Stacy Keebler as David flair back in the day. Yeah. What would you pick? Yes. I would have, I'd spent the weekend with Stacy Keebler. That, that to you is bigger than being ECW world champion. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. And you- I just hope. I hope Jerry Lynn, Lynn beats the fuck out of him here for all of us. Yes, I agree. Yeah. There you go. K- get Keep him with a couple taters. There you go. So David Flair's dad at this time was in the WWF. Yes. Okay. Hmm. And David had done some, uh, developmental stuff with WWE, but ultimately they just decided he didn't have it and parted ways and he had a little stint in Puerto Rico and a stint in TNA. And he often jokes that he did wrestling backwards. <laughs> he started he good big, here, man. He started in the big arenas and, and finished in the armories. <laughs> He's looking good here. I, uh, I had just signed, by the way, this is the 29th of January on January 17th of 20, uh, 2003. I had just signed my first contract with, uh, WSB with radio. Yeah, with WSB. So I was now under contract with WSB, but my boss would allow me to do this. And he told me, he said, yeah, sure. You can go, you can go do it if you, if you want to. And, but, uh, you still have to do your work. So, you know, Nashville being three and a half hours from Atlanta, basically after the show, we drove back and they dropped me off in my car. I can't remember where it was. And I drove right to the radio station, did my air shift and, and then did it didn't get home till like two in the afternoon. So, uh, it was, that was another reason uh, that I didn't want to do it because I had morning shifts on the radio station that I couldn't get out of. And I didn't want to get out of cause they were good to me. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, I, 
TNA uh, deserves some credit. I know you know this building very well. The building looks pretty good. I think for being an old dilapidated type fairgrounds arena, you know, it's a little thing, but you would even see the ECW arena do it, which everybody has acknowledged as a shithole. Just paint the walls black. Yeah. If you paint the walls black and you got the the ring lit well, you're going to be okay. Yeah. And by the way, if this is total nonstop action or tits and ass, uh, we've had some pretty good total nonstop action in this match or in this show. Haven't we? Yeah. I mean, this is total nonstop action. As a matter of full disclosure, I was a huge fan of TNA because I was so hopeful for the wrestling business. I wanted it to work. I wanted it to be different. I bought up. I, I shouldn't have bought them all. I bought most of the weekly pay-per-views. If I was home, I was buying it. I wanted something different. I missed ECW. I missed WCW and this promotion gave me hope. And yes, there were some things on here that, that absolutely sucked. But as someone who had never seen low key before, but had heard about him and had never seen amazing red, but had heard about him. I mean, it was, it was pretty cool to see in 2002. So I'm still hanging with it here in early Oh three. Um, don't get me wrong. A little less David flair, a little less. Uh, Jorge Estrada, but Jerry Lynn, amazing red. Holy shit. Uh, the referee here. Yep. Do you know who the referee is? Uh, I forget his name, but I mean, you don't, you don't even know who's in the ring wrestling right now. Why, no, why, why are you I, think I, know, I, I think I know who the referee is. Okay. I, I think that's Andrew. Yes, it is. Okay. He works for us. Yes, he does. In the truck. Very organized, skillful production guy. And the reason I know he's a referee, he was showing me the one time he, he, he uh, somebody in the truck said, hey, I want to show you this by Andrew. And he took the flip flop and fly bionic, bionic elbow from Dusty. I said, Andrew, this is you. He said, yeah. I said, son of a bitch. How about that? How about Case hey, Mc- <clears throat> McMahon fears talent, according to that sign. That one guy held up a sign backwards. And there you see it. David Flair, mm. with a little help from Ron Killings, has defeated Jerry Lynn. What's in the bag it's supposed to be the title, the belt. Yeah. Okay. But the, the original, cause he used to bring it to TV like the real dumb glow. And it just started and Jerry Lynn's head was right in the way. Next up, we've got uh, tenacious. No, my apologies. Hmm. Still looking for your joint. Son doesn't have it. Oh, let's uh, tell you what, what was written in the observer on, uh, or I'm sorry, on, on figure four. Okay. This came out on uh, February 3rd. Tony <coughs> Schiavone was scheduled to start this week <coughs> to feud with today. Mark Madden has also been talked with about that role. Thank God. Russo was never buddies with Bill Mercer. <laughs> That's a hell of a line. <laughs> so. Yeah, I agree, right? Yeah. Is that one of the Harris twins? Yeah, they're here. They're part of uh yeah, well. CX security. Mm-hmm. Uh here's something also written in that same uh, issue of figure four. It's a very weird deal that only Piper will understand as part of his deal for doing the tape. He wanted TNA to plug his Piper vision. However, he said he didn't want them to plug his website that the Piper vision is on because he felt like it would come off as a commercial. Mr. Wrestling two was backstage before the show. So he happened to drive through Nashville, but he left long before the show started. Funny Hawk story. 
he was talked with and as if he was serious in his newfound religion, which is the direction of so many 80 stars from the road warriors, DBIC, Tully Blanchard, Terry Taylor, Nikita Koloff, Jake Roberts, Hector Guerrero, Sting, Brian Blair, Tatanka, Shawn Michaels, and Greg Valentine have now taken about how he could work for a company that features swearing and tearing clothes off of women. His response was, that's a good question. The funniest answer I ever heard was Bill Watts, who also fell into the category of a dirty, rotten scoundrel in wrestling turned religious zealot when asked circa 85, how he could promote something based on violence and sex. If it was contradictory to his religious beliefs and his response was 4 million a year. (laughs) Every zealot has his price, right? Four million a year. <laughs> of course, that's what the promotion was making at the time. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, that's too good, man. It's amazing that list of of wrestlers and or promoters or people involved in the business who have turned to religion. Well, at the time they were doing speaking tours. What they would do is they would go do a fundraiser for a church where they would, of course, get paid appearance fees out of it. And the church would keep a lot of the profit. But then the next day they would do like a testimony, like a traditional, um, you know, church service. So it became a a quote unquote gimmick for a lot of guys to do shows. uh, And then it became a hotly debated. Okay. So maybe they're using it as a promotional thing, but are they actually true believers? And a lot of people sort of formed different opinions when guys for better or worse, like Jake Roberts would join them. Um, but some of that is, is maybe unfair because, uh, you know, who are we to say what's in their heart at the time? And I think sometimes people who have had struggles with substance issues get judged maybe unfairly. Like people just become a doubting Thomas for them for whatever reason. And I just think that's a little unfair. And some of it is just, we, as wrestling fans want to believe the wrestling character. Like you'd be surprised how many quote unquote smart friends I have who still low key think Kevin Sullivan is the devil. Yeah. Like it's a fucking television persona guys. It's not, and it's funny because you even say that to some of the boys and they're like, Oh, but are you sure? It's like, come on, man. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, she's not here, but she'll hear it anyway. You know, Lois Shivani really, uh, does not like me talking to Britt Baker. And I say, uh, Lois, uh, <clears throat> this is this is not real. She said, but yet she's she's so mean to you. I said, yes, of course. Uh, God, you, you, she just doesn't get it. So I can understand that. And, and and back to the religion part of it. I who we got coming in here now? Uh, this is America's Most Wanted. That's Chris Harris, who's. Uh... A lot of people think is going to be the breakout star of this pairing, but instead when he signs with WWE, he packs on the weight, they put him in an unflattering single or singlet mm-hmm. and he's gone very quickly. And the other guy would go on to be cowboy James storm and wear a hat and all that gimmick. Oh yeah. And they're a really good tag team here. I think in this era, you could argue that they were one of the more underrated tag teams, but I think maybe the best tag team going these days is Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross. We should address it here. We launched something pretty special for our Patreon channels, adfreeshows.com And of course, WHW Monday on Patreon, we're calling it on the road again. And, uh, we hooked up a couple of dash cams, just like you heard us freestyle here on the show. And when you picked up Jim Ross in the Atlanta airport and y'all made the trek to Jacksonville, you documented it. And, uh, one day when, when he makes the return to the Atlanta airport, I think you're going to do it again. This has been a sort of a fun idea we had on the show and the feedback has been incredible. People like being a fly on the road as you guys go up and down the highway. Right. As you can hear in the background, can you hear that? Sounds like uh, JR is giving you a call. Yeah, he is giving me a call. So you going to do a run in on the show. Now nah, my phone's a long way away. I'll call him back when it's over. I'd see that's just, that's his text. That's he just texted me. I have a, wait, I have wait, a, I have wait, a different wait. sound for 
wait, for wait, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. It does that whole song for one text. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if he sent a bunch of texts in a row, like I do, sometimes it would play that shit for 32 minutes. <laughs> Probably. I'd kill myself. <laughs> yes. Hey, um, I was putting over the big tag team because I was hoping that at some point you would sort of tell on yourself. And I mean, really this show has become a version of therapy for you. You get to sort of talk about what's going on in your life and share with your friends and the whole deal. But for I don't like reason, where this is going. Well, I don't like this word. Go ahead. <sighs> Here's a little peek behind the curtain. From what I believe I've been told that, um, when this whole, we're going to, how we're going to get everybody to Jacksonville thing happened, it was suggested that you just picked up Jim from the airport and drive him on down. No big deal from Atlanta. You were going to drive either way. Mm -hmm. And I believe at that point you suggested, Hey, well, I got a brand new Ford Explorer fully loaded. Cause I got that sweet, sweet con money. Uh and then I think the rumor was that a little birdie in a black hat said, God damn, Tony, they'll pay for a rental car. Get us a big, some bitch. So we can stretch out. Yeah. And I think the rumor is you may or may not have secured a Yukon or a Tahoe or a suburban or something of, of that effect. Yes. There he is. And I also believe that, uh, Go ahead. That car, I need to get, I need to get the phone. Go ahead. That car didn't go back the way it left. Yes. I backed into something smart ass. Well, hang on. Why are you, why are you just jumping right to it? I backed into some, see backed into something. Sounds like what Jim Ross has co-eds do whenever he pops a blue chew. What, what exactly happened when you personally made the decision to be reckless with AEW property and Tony Khan's personal savings and deliberately wreck an automobile by playing bumper cars on the interstate. Like you were Scott Steiner in 1999. Jesus Christ. Where do you get this information? Wait, wait, wait. So you didn't wreck the vehicle. Where, where do you, I gotta, I gotta go pick up the phone. Put your hand on your dick for just a second. I'll bring the phone back over here. Track it. Hey, did you see sex bail? Yes. Yeah. I can't believe it. Unbelievably, the Rock and Roll Express have turned their back on the tradition of the National Wrestling Alliance and they've joined sex. Who would have thought that the Rock and Roll Express were ever going to be a part of sex? Certainly no one who went through the territories in 85, 86, or 87. Nobody would have ever put Robert Gibson and Ricky Morton in the same sentence as sex. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that something? Okay. First of all, where'd you find out that I I didn't wreck the car? Okay. I oh, oh, she well, turned it back in pristine. Got it. It's all fake news. No, no, no. Thanks for clearing I, it up for us. I, I I stopped at a truck stop and I backed up and I hit a wall. Boom. And I just dented the 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 rear quarter panel. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you telling me a wall jumped out in front of you? Oh no. Okay. No, 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 no. I know. I know who the stooge is. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. The Stooge is part of the Flair family. Oh, That's really? That's who the Stooge is. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. It's a family full of Stooges. I get it now. Wait, are you saying that David Flair called Tony Khan and ratted on you? No, I'm saying David Flair's sister did. Wait a no. minute. Don't you okay. bring the good goddamn name of Char Charlotte Flair into this. Charlotte <laughs> Flair knows nothing about AEW. She's never even seen the product or hey, program. Okay. She doesn't even know who you are. I hey. introduced you to her for the very first time when Rick was in the hospital in 2017. She just thinks you're a coworker of mine. I should have kept the goddamn Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony, how did you fucking manage to wreck Tony Khan's personal vehicle? <laughs> It's not Tony. It's a rental from Avis. Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, and you paid for that rental. Yes, I did. Yeah. My insurance paid for it. And, and you, uh, 
You didn't ask, Mine, you, you didn't get reimbursed from AW for playing bumper cars. Uh, yes, I did get reimbursed for the price of the rental car, but the, ins my insurance took care of the other stuff. You're real, like driving around every See, day insurance. Yeah. So yeah, right. No, it was actually my insurance plus the, uh, American express. If you rent with American express platinum card, they pick up the, uh, the, uh, CDW collision damage waiver. You see. So you didn't opt for the upgraded Avis insurance. You just said, as long as I use this card, I'm good. Yeah. The, the, listen, a little note, that stuff's a gimmick. A little note. That mm -hmm. wall was a, was a work, was a shoot wall. Wasn't a working <laughs> wall. No working walls around here. The only working wall that we talk about <laughs> on this show is dead. <laughs> you ran into a shoot wall. Had you ran into a working <clears throat> wall, you'd have probably been okay. <laughs> Oh God. Oh, Jesus. There's no way. Why why are you upset at me that you wrecked a car? I uh, you know what? I'm just I'm I'm just just once a stooge family, always a stooge family. I just can't believe that you think that my sweet sister in law, Charlotte mm -hmm. Flair, would call mm -hmm. and, and, and rat you out mm -hmm. to uh Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Jesus! Now we're bringing Cody into this. Well, what the uh, fuck's wrong with you? What do you mean? I mean, what? Cody has nothing to do with this. I'm sure he had something to say about you wrecking Tony's personal vehicle. I did not wreck Tony's personal vehicle. I wrecked an Avis rental car that AEW paid for. Right. I mean, goddamn, money grows on trees. Just run that shit into the wall. You used to say that this wrestling promotion was a a coffin on roller skates. That's the way you described your employer, WCW. And now here you are literally coffin on roller skates and vehicles. <sighs> Wrong you know, again. Here's the thing. So, Hey, you, you wrecked a 2020. I've never even sat in a 2020. I, I have never seen or touched with my hands, a car that came out in the year 2020. And you got so goddamn many of them. You just run the motherfuckers in the walls. Who cares? I use TK's platinum card. <laughs> Keep the miles off mine. That's what the smart man in the black hat said. <laughs> hey, don't jump on me because you're still pissed off about Dave Silver wrecking your car. That's exactly where we're back to. Okay. Both <clears throat> of you are a couple of no good rat soup eating other car friend wrecking motherfuckers. Don't you compare me to that motherfucker that couldn't even blow leaves off your lawn without taking a siesta. That well, first of all, you assume that he's going to do yard work. That's racist. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm assuming he's going to do any work, and well, that's stupid. And we know that that's not going to happen. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> hey, are you are you familiar with the phrase "daddy" or the term "daddy"? <clears throat> daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my daughter calls me daddy. Mm. Any other uses? No. Mm -mm. Well, it's uh. Well, the, the cliche, who's your daddy? Uh huh. That that's the only, well, a lot of women are calling, um, mm -hmm. and men are mm -hmm. calling handsome men daddies. Okay. So you know how you always say, boy, Tom Zink was a damn good looking man. Do you remember those episodes here of the show? Yeah. Right. You could refer to Tom Zink as a daddy. Okay. You could say, Oh, Tom Zink was a dad. Well, you and I have a great close personal friend of the show and I won't out his name here, but his mm -hmm. wife refers to Eric Bischoff as daddy with the good hair. Wow. Daddy with the good hair. Uh, I would say back in the nineties. Yeah. Well, here's my question. If you, we were going to look at you in the same vein, mm -hmm. would it be daddy with the dirty hair? <laughs> daddy with the dyed hair. I don't dye my hair or daddy. Well, it's your beard or okay. daddy with the dick hair. <laughs> because you know, you've often told us it looks like a button on a fur coat and that was pre manscape, but whatever. Well, how, what would your daddy be? 
Daddy with the flowing hair. Flowing. Mm. Daddy with the wrecked car. <laughs> Where did you go? Daddy with the bicycle. <laughs> Daddy with the bicycle. So, um, are you going to be selling Lois's gently used bike? No, she she promises me that she's getting back on it. Could be worse, I guess. You know, I mean, you only wrecked Tony Khan's personal vehicle. She wrecked her own arm. <laughs> okay, to be clear, that was an Avis. Do you need to see the? Do you need to see the receipts? No, to prove it, it was it, not Tony Khan's personal vehicle. I know. To prove- Here's the real thing we need. Why don't you just post on Twitter? You see, you never post anything goddamn interesting at all. It's just always shill shit. Why don't you post pictures of this vehicle you wrecked? I mean, you had to take pictures to get your insurance to pay for it. So they're in your phone. What's the hold up? Mm. But hold up is it's, it's nobody's business except you and the stooge family you married into. I like it. It didn't take you very long to figure it out that it was all <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're a terrible person sometimes. You're just terrible. Terrible. I've never wrecked my boss's car. <laughs> it's because you're the boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. But I have, Dave man. Silva wrecked your car, didn't he? That no good for nothing rat soup eating fat motherfucker. You said that with some. Yeah. Some, uh, some that fuck, has he done any, uh, has he done the, uh, graphics for this paper, this podcast yet? What do you think? Get your ass to doing them right now. Motherfucker. We recorded. No, he did it. I, I noticed that, uh, my, uh, my video keeps dipping the black. Were they running commercials in a pay-per-view? So here's, I'm glad you bring that up because I noticed that too. And they were, no, they were not running commercials in the pay-per-view. I think what happened along the way is. Before the idea to have an app came about, they were probably able to license old episodes here for TV internationally. Mm -hmm. So they probably went in and added commercial breaks spots. Okay. So you could run this on regular TV, um, you know, in France or wherever the fuck. Sure. And maybe you get some sort of little fee because they're looking for content and you happen to have some and why not get paid for it? Yeah. All right. I wanted to mention this would make the, uh, the dirt sheets this week. Surprises were Tony Schiavone as a heel announcer and Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. Both angles were almost identical and that the people thought they were baby faces standing up for the NWA, but instead they mocked the NWA claiming it was behind the times. Morton and Gibson got a very nice face pop when they saved Chris Harris and James storm from beating up from, or from a beating from all of Russo's group. But then they turned on them with chair shots. And this set up what ended up being the main event, a terribly disappointing match because Gibson looked like a guy who hadn't been in the ring in years. It was a good match on paper, but the timing was awful. Uh, he would say it was a mistake to have Morton and Gibson come in as heels as once they made the turn, nobody cared and people wanted to like them. They at least should have played into what the audience wanted for a few weeks, particularly since they were already doing this other angle with Shivani. And they're, he's going to break down exactly what you did, but first oh boy. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll actually see it on the show here. Mm. I mean, listen to lots of talent here. You've got the former WCW standout, Mike Sanders. A lot of people were high on him at the end. Of course, he's the ECW world champion, Jerry Lynn. And we know Ron Killings is going to be a very, very big deal. He's already been a big player here in TNA, but he's going to be really a hall of famer in w, for WWE one day. And I know a lot, a lot of people will poke fun at that, but you look at how long he's been there and all the fun silliness that he's been a part of. And you look at what the criteria is to be in the WWE hall of fame and Ron's checked all those boxes. He's going in one day. Yeah. And you know what? He still looks good. Looks great. You know, yes, he does. There's an old, uh, cliche I learned about 10 years ago that a friend of mine, because I don't know that you ever met Ron, but uh, my, my Ron locally here. But Ron looks 35 and Ron's fucking 78 or whatever. And he yeah. used to say black don't crack. Ron I've Killings is truth of that cliche, mm-hmm. which is probably not even PC to say, but the son of a bitch looks the same age for 30 years. He's like the, uh, the black athlete equivalent of JJ Dillon, who has looked the exact same age as long as we've all known him. That's right. 
Uh. Mm. <laughs> How got, about that bullet the... there? Let's just track it. You see, you got these guys running right here thinking they're the cock of the walk. Well, guys, you're not the only roosters in the hen house tonight. Baby, rock and roll's back in town. And what we've done in our life, you couldn't repeat it because we knew what Excuse sports... Excuse me just a minute, it. buddy. You know, I can't believe you two guys would double cross the NWA. Well, fine. If that's what you want, screw you and screw you. You want Harris and Storm? Well, you got them. Only this time it's going to be face-to-face, no chairs from behind, and we'll find out who can really rock and roll. Boy, Robert Gibson just. <laughs> and on the flip side there, uh, man, Bullet Bob could always cut a promo. I just thought it was it's... funny. Oh, look at who it is. A very young AJ Styles, the first X division champion. He's, uh, it's amazing to think that this guy was a part of WCW at the very tail end. I mean, what if WCW would have continued? What would his career have looked like? We know wouldn't it have been as, wouldn't have been as good as it is now. Well, that's my thing though. Is you know he was the top guy here. He was the flag bearer for TNA for so long, but they were sort of always under the radar. I mean, even when they were, had a little more prime time swag about them, they were a little more under the radar than WCW, even at their peak. So. I don't know. It's just fun to think about what could have been. Yeah, I know it is. I mean, imagine serious business. If he was able to have been, cause you think about, you know, maybe WCW kept going and now his contract was coming due and he doesn't resign. And because he had had success with WCW and had been a quote unquote proven commodity on national TV, maybe he shuffles over to WWE in Oh three. Hmm. And yeah. that would have meant he could have worked with Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho and um, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit on and on and on and on. Mm. Would have been something else. Yeah, that's uh, nothing like fantasy booking. So when you uh, when you wreck Tony's vehicle. All right, that's enough of that shit, son of a bitch. I mean, how do you report that? Do you have like a form to fill out? Do you send a text to yes. Harrington and say you're sorry or No. You send a you send a you talk you call American Express, you call your personal insurance, and you fill out something for American Express and you pay any deductibles. And you go on about your business. So, so people at AEW are hearing that you wrecked Tony's personal vehicle for the first time listening to this show. Yeah. Okay. I want to, I want to make this clear. Okay. Cause Tony's got anytime a lot of cars, you say, probably. anytime you say Tony's personal vehicle, you a lie. Okay. So the car that okay. the comp yeah. that Tony paid for, for you, that you wrecked, mm-hmm. did you ever notify him or anyone on his staff that you had destroyed his yes. possessions? Yes. I sent pictures to the guy at the front office who is not Chris Harrington. It's another guy, at the front office. We do all of our work through. I, I sent him you. pictures. I got you. you. You think I just, you think I just, this is my first fucking time on the road. Well, and the way you drive, it Jeez. sure looks Jeez. like it. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Germany. I mean, I'll let the fuck Kansas. The, who, the, who the fuck do you think I am anyway? The worst, Don't answer that. The worst wheel man. Don't answer. You hit a wall, Tony. You don't even hit a that. moving fucking thing. You hit a fucking wall. Fuck. You know what? That's all that's going to be on Twitter from these slap dicks now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, listen, I tried to throw you the daddy line and you didn't bite. Yeah. Oh, here's <clears throat> another thing I learned recently. Mm. Uh, apparently there is a, uh, a little bit of an underground movement building mm-hmm. for, and I'm going to say it as uh mm-hmm. plain English as I can. And then I'll say it the way I've heard it. It's the dirty girl movement. Are you in the loop uh, on this? No, I'm not. Well, apparently there are a group of, uh, young ladies who, uh, really take great pride in being that a girl. 
Take pride in being what? A dirty girl. Okay, dirty girl. Okay. No, no, no. I think the move is you just got to make a noise. I don't think you're supposed to enunciate. Okay. It's just like a G and there may be a vowel and maybe an R and maybe an L. Yeah. Maybe an H. Who knows? How many, how many, um, dirty girls do you think Ravens had his share of over the years? Mm. Uh, considering I don't know who, a, what a dirty girl is. <laughs> <laughs> I have no <laughs> answer for that question. Well, let me give you an example. Like I bet Whitney Wright would self-identify as a dirty girl. Okay. What do you think of them still using the old 10 pounds? Mm. Well, that has some, uh, name value to it. I, I think it's cool. You know, it, I, yeah, I, I can I, appreciate well, what I they know. were trying where it's like, we're mixing tradition and whatever the fuck Russo's doing here. I mean, I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying, I don't know the word for not tradition. You know. Right. Just new shit, new shit. I like Don West get up there. I feel like he's ready to host a game show, but it's one from like a, a bad SNL spinoff in the early nineties. It's like, let's make a deal, but it's with the devil and you're trading in your soul. Mm. <laughs> you can get a brand new Ferrari and this porn mm. star or really roll the dice and go for <laughs> what's behind door number three. <laughs> and you pick door number three and it's Larry Zabisco looking like that. Uh, Larry lost a little weight. I saw Larry buy crack in the parking lot at one of these shows once. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He bought a guy, he bought it from a guy in a, uh, multicolored clown wig. Everybody <laughs> seemed happy. Are they going to give him the microphone? Of course they are. And we're going oh, to, we, we got to track it. and you don't have it yet either. You can ask anybody from Professor today to Gunner the cameraman, and they'll tell you the same thing. You don't have the wisdom yet. You know, I hear you shooting your mouth off about how you could beat me two times, three times in 10 minutes. Don't flatter yourself, but at the same time, don't let that wrestling world get away. You can have the life of a wrestling star. You can have a, a red Ferrari parked outside your big suburban house, standing by your pool, brown muscles gleaming in the sun, being adored by a bevy of beautiful deaf mutes. Life does not get any better than that. Sounds like a pretty good All time. you have to do is still go through the school of hard knocks. Oh, come on here and tell anybody you can beat me. That was my bad last week. Oh, you're still a little cocky. I tell you what, Mr. Styles, let's see if you're a man yet. Let's see if you can make your word good. You beat me twice in 10 minutes, and I'll do everything in my power to get you a heavyweight championship shot. In fact, more than that, I double dog dare ya. Not a goddamn double dog dare. Or do you deny? He already said he could do it. This isn't the Christmas story. And no. More off. Oh, that'll slap some sense into him. Uh-oh. AJ Styles <laughs> was laying waste to old Larry Land, the living legend. Larry could talk, couldn't he? Yes, he can. Man, oh, something else. I almost said, you could have a red Ferrari that Tony Schiavone would eventually wreck Yeah, sitting by your pools. <laughs> he should have said that. That would have been great, wouldn't it? 
I like that you went from being mad about it to finally just giving up and agreeing. Fine. <laughs> fuck it. AJ looks so AJ looks so different here. Good God. So AJ is the heel here, I guess, or was Zabisco a heel? Was AJ an NWA guy or I, I, we were talking all that shit happened. I don't know. Nah, that doesn't matter. Fuck it. How young does AJ look here? It's amazing. Next up is your segment. I think, I think it starts with Goldilocks and Percy and mm-hmm. then here you come, baby. Wow. Are you excited? Uh, I've seen clips of it. I haven't seen the whole thing through. So interesting. We're going to, while, while AJ and this is real guys, uh, in case we've sort of buried the lead, Larry Zabisco and AJ Styles were wrestling a match. Bruce, take your pills. (laughs) We, uh, we took to Twitter at WHW Monday. If you haven't followed us already, you should definitely do so. Uh, don't bother Tony. He'll probably block you. But if you follow the show account, you can still interact with us. Uh, it's at WHW Monday. Uh, and we said, Hey, do you have a question about Tony's soul TNA appearance? Hmm. And, uh, believe it or not, there are a lot of people who had questions. I bet. I bet some of them were shitty. Really? Yeah. I would imagine. Okay. That's a little hurtful. Mm-hmm. Do you have them? Do you, are you going to hit me with them now? Well, lots of the questions were about what the fuck were you thinking with your outfit? Mm-hmm. Because you've got a kiss shirt on. How would you describe the shirt? You have a kiss t-shirt on, but you've got a, like a little short sleeve button up over it. How would you describe that shirt? That would be a yellow, orange, white type Hawaiian shirt. Like that I had on. you went to the douche section at TJ Maxx, right? Mm-hmm. Probably. Yes. And you have a series of gold chains. You have like a Mr. Key start, Mr. T starter set on, right? Yeah. That joke was not good back in the eighties, but go ahead. No, but I'm just saying you have like four gold necklaces on and they're not tucked into your shirt. They're like out like, right. like a low rent Goomba. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. A low rent Goomba. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was a low rent Dago, a low rent WAP. I still have those chains. Okay, where did you buy the, the sh- shirt? Do you remember where you bought the shirt? No, but you know we we gave that away as a prize last year. Yes, we did with a bag full of dog hair, Shivani dog yes. hair, which right. was now limited edition because since that time I think you've managed to kill not one but two of your dogs. Now that you're getting o- you're going over the line here a little bit. Okay, the dogs didn't die. No, they died. Okay. Okay, but I didn't kill them. Well, did they die because they were living in the house with you? No. So if they would have lived somewhere else, they would have been dead as well. That's right. Okay. Well, we'll never know because we can't run A and B tests because you managed to kill the A specimens. <laughs> no. Bad Money Slim writes in. So before Shivaniing, was it any way the wind blows? Hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about any way the wind blows? There is a line that um, is going to be used in the promo. Mm-hmm where you're accused of being a politician. Yeah. By, by today. And today basically says that your motto in WCW was any way the wind blows. So what bad money slim wants to know is, was that a legit Shivani or is that just today shooting from the hip off the cuff, making something up that, uh, in, in my mind, it was him shooting off the cuff, making something up. I think, I really think. I really think Tanae believed that. God damn. Is your phone just like a nerd convention? Every fucking nerdy bullshit thing you could possibly hear is coming out of your phone. Yes, it is. It's horrible. I mean, have you heard about broadcasting etiquette? I thought you were on the radio. Okay, are you? Uh, where were we talking about before you? You got offended by the sound of my. Well, my we were phone. trying to hold the show, but you're trying to multitask. <clears throat> well, explain. you know what? I'm not the boss. You're the boss. Well, well, you picked right? the goddamn time. No, now, but, if, if it was up to me, we would have taped first thing this morning. But now you're late for all your production horseshit. And as Michael Hayes would say, that's on you, because you picked the time. So anyway, 
Tanay, I think Tanay was, how do I say this? Uh, maybe just let me, let me talk about it after I watch it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Philly burner wants to know dream job calling for the NFL, major league baseball, college football, or AEW. Right now it's AEW. <sighs> mm -hmm. I knew that sound would come. No serious business. If you had your druthers, would you want to be on ABC calling the Georgia bulldog game? Would you want to be on Fox calling world series? Or would you want to be on NBC calling the super bowl? Uh, I'd want to be, uh, on Fox calling the world series. Yeah. I, I don't, what's this? What's this? Oh, okay. Yeah. 10 minutes to beat Zabisco. I got it. Uh, let's, let's keep it going here. Talent wants to know, do you have any regrets about not getting into the business sooner, like during this era or any <clears> other? And this is an interesting question because you've talked about before that you had reached out a few times over the years to Vince McMahon or <clears> triple H or, you know, talent relations within WWE and specifically Kevin Dunn. And you acknowledge in the promo that we're going to hear in a minute that you had reached out to Jeff Jarrett once and you had inroads here with not only Jeff, but Bob Ryder is a major player behind the scenes. And I'm sure we'll talk about Bob a little more before the show's over, but you know, we're two years out. You're trying to sort of find your new identity. And I'm sure at times you sort of, even though there were things about WCW, you didn't like, you had to enjoy some of the comforts it provided as you alluded to earlier. Did you, uh, Think about getting in, in between this show. We know at the end of this, you're going to say, nope, that's it. I'm done. And we'll tell that story shortly, but between then and me calling to convince your ass to do a podcast, cross your mind again. No, not at all. Well, one time it did. And here's when it crossed my mind. Uh, another time after in 20. 15, this is before this at the end of 2015, before, uh, about a year before you and I met, I, my contract was up with, uh, with WSB and I'd had a pretty good run. I'd had, my God, I'd had 11 years and they decided not to renew my contract. Uh, I only, so the only money I had coming in at the time was, well, first of all, who's the kid in the sweater here? That's Mortimer plum tree Mortimer. Okay, good for Mortimer. Uh, so I, uh, I, I still had the money coming in from the Georgia Bulldogs and from the Atlanta Braves, but I didn't have, uh, the money coming in from WSB, nor did I have any health insurance. And I was in my, you know, mid to late fifties. And I was, uh, so I thought, you know what? I'm, I, I'm going to see if there's any neat one for me, uh, in, in WWE. And I was looking for only a, I didn't, I was looking for, I think I've told some of the story. I was looking only for a production job. I didn't really want to go back into doing announcing again because again, and this is before you came around again, I thought that my work was so shitty at the end that fans had turned on me and didn't want to hear me and had no, they didn't want, they, they had run their course of Tony Schiavone. So I thought in my mind, you know what? I don't even want to announce wrestling anymore, but maybe I can make a few ends meet and get back and do production. And I talked about this with Lois and her response was fuck that. We're not moving to Connecticut, but I still reached out and I reached out to triple H because I had his number, just sent him a text. And I reached out to Vince McMahon. I called his office and talked to Carolyn, I believe his secretary. And then as I'm on a, a basketball trip, I, uh, I got a call from Mark Carano and Mark Carano said, uh, first of all, Vince and Paul want to know how you're doing. I said, I'm doing okay. And there may be something for you. Uh, we will get back with you. And of course, they never did, which is typical of them with me. Finally, I get a call from Kevin Dunn. 
And Kevin Dunn says, hey, uh, I just wanted to call and let you know that we appreciate your interest, but we don't – we have plenty of announcers. I say, Kevin, dude, I I, I said every, every way – I don't want to be an announcer. And I said – I told – Vince's secretary, I told Triple H, I just want to do some production work. I want to do, I enjoy producing. And he said, oh, that's different. He said, with the network, we do need producers. We'll be back in touch with you. And of course, just like Kevin Dunn always would do, he didn't get back in touch with me. So then I said, fuck it. That's it. No more. Not even look for it anymore. And I think we got to track it here, don't we? Uh, and so then that's where you came into my life and the rest is history. We got Goldilocks welcoming in Bill Moody, uh, the former Paul bear, Percy Pringle. And, uh, we're going to, as we like to say here on the show, track it. I, I gotta say as being uh, the new girl on the block, new kid, I try to do a little research and nose around and just learn as much as I can about the people in our company. And I gotta say it's it's incredible to, just to find out what a pioneer you are in this business. And you are a, a very respected man with the exception of a few weeks ago with Vince Russo. When, when you were so clearly looking for something from him, seeking him out, how did, it, how did it make you feel to be publicly humiliated in the ring? Well, first of all, the first week of April, I'm going to be standing in Las Vegas, Nevada, up on the podium at the Cauliflower Alley Club. And if you don't know what the Cauliflower Alley Club, that's the premier club of talent in our industry. It's composed of all the heroes from the past, present, and future. This year, they are honoring me at their convention. And I'm going to stand up there proud as hell and accept that because I sure have worked my behind for it. Unlike somebody else named Vincent Russo. Vince Russo, just that name makes my stomach sour. Vince Russo, you will never know what it feels like to stand at the Cauliflower Alley Club in front of those people, in front of those legends, and be honored. You'll never know that. I've had the best of both worlds. I've certainly had the best of sports entertainment. I've had the best of the traditional style. But you know, two weeks ago, when I was leaning across those stairs right there, my life's blood was pouring out of my head. Why did you want me to track all this? I don't know. That's where I'm coming out, isn't it? Eventually? Yeah. Well, I keep tracking it then. He's one of those vultures in that SEX group. Here you come. I'm not running, Russo. You'll never know what Percy Pringle III will do next, who he'll do it with, or where he'll do it. But I promise you, my reputation speaks for itself. And I'm not going anywhere. Who's this? Tony, Sh- Tony Schiavone. Oh, man. Well, well, I told you, my former broadcast partner, Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone, how you doing? Good. I, you know, you've been in the business a long time. Our paths have never crossed. I used to watch you in world-class championship wrestling. Enjoyed you in the WWF with The Undertaker. You really, I've, I've really admired your career. But, but, but I, w- I do want to say something that two weeks ago I was watching this program. And you know when you were talking to Vince Russo? I have never in my life seen someone kiss someone's ass the way you kissed Vince Russo to try to get in this business. Go ahead, keep talking. Well, I will keep talking. Let me tell you this. This is one man's opinion, okay? I would have never stooped that low. All right, here, stand next to me. I need to look thin, okay? I would have never stooped that low. It was pathetic, but it's just one man's opinion. 
Okay, that's just my opinion, but I do want to talk about something if I can. As you probably know, I've been out of the, the business for almost two years, and I've been wondering exactly why I've not had a job in pro wrestling for two years. Is your name Goldilocks? As in, who's been sleeping in my bed? Now let me get this right. You do the interviews around here, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct, okay. So let me do an interview with you, okay? How long have you been in pro wrestling? Five minutes, okay? Why are you here with NWA? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Goldie. An ass. Now, this wasn't what I expected. That's the reality of our business. I thought he was answering. And hey, I don't care. I don't mind. I understand when Vince Russo talks about extreme, S E X. I understand that. But here's the deal. You know, you, you make Pamela Paul Shock look like Diane Sawyer. Do you realize that? And I do understand, but what I can't understand and what I think, that a blonde bimbo like you should be holding something instead of this. Tony, that's enough. And I think you know what I mean, right? Tony! Tony, that's but enough. I, You've gone over the line, Tony. Well, Mike, come on in the ring here. Come on in the ring. We haven't talked in a long time. Come on. Come on. As most of you probably know, I was responsible for driving Mike Tanay around at each and every show during the days of WCW. So Mike, it's been a long time since we talked, so I'd like to talk to you face to face. I called you because I have a couple of things I wanted to say. First of all, how's the family? How's Karen, okay? Family's doing just fine. Good. Mike. When the NWA TNA first formed, I thought to myself, this will be a perfect opportunity for me to get back into pro wrestling. You know why, Mike? Tell me. Okay, I'll tell you why. In 1983, when I was interviewing Harley Race, what were you doing? Selling air conditioning equipment in LA? That was working in Las Vegas, but get to your oh, point. You're working What's in the Las story? Vegas. Not only that, I was there with the Rock and Roll Express. I was there when Magnum T.A. had his car wreck. I was there with the Four Horsemen. I was doing the Great American Bash while you were writing dirt sheets in Las Vegas. You understand? And your what? point? My point is that I tried to get in the door here, and you know what I was told? Well, first of all, Jeff Darrett never returned my call. You know what I was told? Tanay doesn't want to work with you. Tanay thinks you held him down during the years at WCW. Is that the deal, Mike? Yeah, you I'm think sure, I held Tony. You down? I held you down? That's hardly the case. If anything, I went out of my way each and every week to make your job easier, and you know that. Oh, yeah, you did a great job of that. You did an absolute great job of that. But I want to talk reality, Mike. I want to talk reality. I heard you out here talking to Vince Russo about how Vince Russo had you sitting at home. You know what I say to that, Mike? Bullshit! That's what I say to that. No, you, how many kids you get in? It's a fact. That's yeah. exactly what it was. You're always... Vince Russo cost me my job, and he cost you your job, and he cost hundreds of other people their job with WCW, and that's a fact. Baloney. He jumped on the Titanic before it hit the iceberg. It was going down anyway. You know it, and I know it. What is keeping pro wrestling down is people like you. And let me tell and you why. why is that? Let me tell you why. If you would have been around in the 1950s, would you have liked Gorgeous George? Hell no, you wouldn't have liked it. You'd have kept him down. What about Andy Kaufman? And Hardly the case. What about Andy Kaufman and the deal in the 70s with him? Would you have gone for that? No, because it wouldn't meet up to your standards. You would have buried Hulkamania. You would have buried the NWA. You would have buried the NWO. You would have done all that, Mike, because Vince Russo doesn't book doesn't like things the right. way you, you like it. Vince Russo doesn't belong in wrestling. You think Tony, I'm against progress in Tony. wrestling? That's not the case at all. Tony! You wanna, you wanna talk some facts? Tony! Let's talk some facts. I'm not They're shut. trying to cut Tony. me off. Don't cut me off. Let's talk facts. Oh, Let's that's talk all you facts. Got facts. Let's talk facts. Let's talk 1999. Let's talk facts. This man has bullshit. 
shit between his ears, Tony. He does not listen to one word you say. And he represents tradition. This is what it's all about. People like him who only give a shit about themselves, Tony. He doesn't care about you or your kids or you, the best announcer in this business, not working for two years. So what I say is Mike Tanay, Tony Schiavone does not need you because Tony, behind that door, there is a family. We care about each other. We don't stab each other in the back like the Tanays of the business. You want a home, you've got a job, Tony. You've got a job right beyond that door and we're waiting for you with open arms. You and Russo? I guess I shouldn't be surprised, Tony. Remember your motto all those years? Yeah, when we drove down the road. Remember your motto? Any way the wind blows. In other words, who's ever in charge, you're gonna kiss their butt. You know what, Tony? That's a perfect association for you with Russo. Remember the word family, Mike. Remember the word family. You understand? Two kids going to college, sitting on the sidelines, and Vince Russo put me on a job. You're bullshit. You've always been bullshit, and I want to tell you this right now. Down in Atlanta, Georgia, is a guy named Scott Hudson who could do your job any day, and he wouldn't even charge him the airfare to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> you know what, Tony? When it came to job security in all those years with WCW, you were all about politics. You were never about performance. So there you go. Tony Schiavone's sole TNA appearance. The only time we ever saw Tony as a heel. Tony, you just watched it back for the first time in over 17 years. I guess you've never really seen it all the way through at all. No. But now you have. What'd you think? I hated it. Meltzer, I'm sorry, not Meltzer. Alvarez would say some people like Shivani playing the heel announcer, but the live crowd was dead for the segment where he and Tanae argued forever. The gist of the weird shoot angle, which was planned ahead of time to a degree, is Shivani was supposed to mock Tanae by saying if people like him ran the business, that gorgeous George Hulkamania and Andy Kaufman would have never been in wrestling. There's a lot of other lines, but Shivani ended up forgetting his lines on TV. Tanae's comeback was cut short by Russo coming out early and trying to grab the mic from him, which was not scripted and try to baby face himself by saying he was the one to save wrestling for everyone's kids because it'll die without him. Others were mad because they expected Tanae to sell longer for Shivani. And when he didn't, Russo came out. Although Shivani was planned for a long-term role as a heel announcer that is now in question as he left the building before, or after the taping, he was telling people he wouldn't be back. He drove back to Atlanta after the show with Raven, Sanders, Russo, and maybe Gilberti. And Shivani told him that he felt terrible playing a heel and wanted no part of it. They were trying to pump him up and say he did well, but it didn't change his tune for the rest of the trip. A few days later in Jeremy Borash's TNA report, he as much as said the same thing. So chat us up. What the fuck? Okay. I, I didn't, I, I didn't mind playing the heel. To be honest with you, uh, I can just tell you that my feeling at that time was uh, I didn't mind the reason. Again, the, the real reason that I didn't want to come back is I just didn't want to do wrestling again. I didn't. I had had enough of it, and uh, I wanted to wanted to go another direction. What did you had enough of? The politics, the travel, the fans, the creative. The writing process, the matches. What, why, why wasn't a good fit? What changed? Wow. Kid cash coming out. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it was. May I it just Conrad. The only thing I can say is, and uh, there's very little about this. I remember, I, I think if I'm right, it may have never aired, but I did an interview in the back afterwards. Yeah. That, we're going to see that in a moment. I okay, think. good. All right. And I felt pretty good about that. Uh, but the only thing I can remember, and I remember this distinctly, vividly, was watching and listening to what was going on. I, I was just turned off by the business. I was turned off by it. I, I, and maybe it was because that there was two years and, you know, Vince never called me. And, and maybe it was because I thought in my mind that, wow, you know, now I'm right. We're talking 2003. I'm on uh, the Atlanta Braves pregame and postgame show. 
and I'm doing that and I'm, I'm getting to go to Braves games and I'm, I'm getting to work with the Georgia Bulldogs now. And I'm, I'm really lo- and loving what I'm doing. And I just didn't want it anymore. So that's why it, it's not because I felt bad about being a heel. Not at all. But I do know they, we talked about it on the way back and I told Vince and I, then I, 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 when I, sh- I remember shutting the door of the van, I say, uh, Vince said, come on, just get, come out one more time and see what you think. Just give it one more shot. And I said, I, I don't think so, Vince, I, I'll call you. And I called him and told him I, I can't do it. And I appreciate it. Vince was always good to me, man. I mean, there was a, he had something in Chattanooga years later where he was going to bring me out and was going to, um, he said, he said, you know, you've been screwed over by the business and I want to, uh, have a night for you. And so come on out and we'll do something for you that night. And my boss, I told my boss and my boss at that time, I can't remember what time the year that year was. My boss said, listen, stay away from wrestling. I said, okay. And so I called Vince. I said, I'm, I can't do it. I can't come out. So Lois told you to stay away from wrestling. No, my boss. And you, you said, and, boss. yeah, you said that Lois yeah. told you to, wait, wait, who was your boss? If Lois wasn't your boss, it was a guy named Pete Spriggs who since retired from Cox media. Yeah. Well, he's good man. He's a cock. Fuck him. No, he's not good. Well, well, we, he was a good man. No, he wasn't. Okay. We needed you to be a part of our wrestling shit and he could took you away from us. So fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> what? That, 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 look, the timing couldn't have been better, Conrad. Really, you think about it. The, the timing could have couldn't have been better. I stayed out long enough to where, with the exception of a handful of real dickheads, out long enough to where people didn't really remember how bad I was at the end. Well, no, it wasn't necessarily you. You were you were given an impossible task. So anyway, and so time. Nostalgia got, you know, kids who are watching it, your age, who were younger back then watching it, big into nostalgia, remembers that part of their child. It, it's in all of us, man. Something that clicks in our childhood really draws us to it. I, I feel the same way when I watch vintage games on, on YouTube, vintage baseball or, or football games. Reminds me of my childhood. So now everybody grows up. You're part of this group, grows up, nostalgia. I'm part of the past. And all of a sudden now I'm welcome back with open arms. It, it wasn't that easy. I don't want to mean to say it was easy. It took some time and it took some effort for a lot of effort from you to make it work. But it, I just think timing, the timing was right. And, um, uh, I didn't think it at first, but yeah, the timing is right. And it's much better. The timing was much better. If I would have, okay, let me, let me ask these. Who are these two girls? Let me just and say I'll this. If you were, if you would have went back with TNA, I mean, if you would have mm-hmm. got back in the business here with TNA, mm-hmm. you would have had to wreck your own car. You wouldn't have been able to wreck Tony's <laughs> rental from Avis, you know? And yeah. I had a feeling you say you, something let me fucking just you, stupid like that. They wouldn't you have had a fucking platinum stooge ass Fleer family. Whoa, okay? whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Stooge ass Fleer family. Let me okay? just tell you, son. And you know what? Right? You know what? I hope during Thanksgiving, when you all get together, that pop pop shows his dick to the grandchildren. How's that sound? Well, that's not going to happen. Okay. So anyway, uh, stooge fucking family. Okay. Let's see. No, I was not. Place. Uh, do you want to? Get, you know, we we're nearly done with this show, and you haven't given a time code one time. Okay. Well, girls picking up a girl, which is always good. One twenty nine fifty seven fifty eight one thirty. One hour thirty minutes. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. Now. I'm completely lost. Well, we're used to that. We see you on Dynamite every no, week. No, no, no. Okay. I just think that. Uh, okay. Had I stuck in, if I'd stuck in the business, I would have just been. I don't know. I don't think I would have lasted. You made the right call. We're glad you're back. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Who are the girls here? Well, well, listen, you could pay attention to the show a little every now and again. Kid Cash is teaming with Trinity 
Sonny Siaki, AKA fake rock is teaming with desire desire and Trinity. Yes. Yes. These girls are taking some bumps and you're on the other side of this, by the way, I am your, your promo. Oh, okay. Hmm. No, these girls, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. These girls are taking some bumps from guys. Look at that. Do these girls have any longevity in the business? I mean, they don't have Tony Schiavone kind of stay in power. <laughs> Who's the girl here with the, with a duster on? Um, missed it. Yeah. There she is. Kid Cash picking up the win. Kid Cash looked pretty good, man. Uh, the uh, the girl that they're all cheering for there, that's Athena, the ring attendant. Okay. What the hell? Here I am again. I'm a little behind. I'm going to track it. Here. Are you finished with your cliches? What cliches? How about an Enziguri? How about a Hurricane Rana? Yeah, why didn't you learn those okay. moves when yeah, you were an announcer with let WCW? Me take this X Championship does he not know what those moves are. Of course he does it. Mike, can I ask you something? Fire away, Tony. You're on stage. The s- do they allow her to come out and interfere in all the matches here? Yeah, great. Now, all the people talking about outside interference, you believe this. You go and you try to get a real job, and what happens? The X Champion. You're not kidding, it was. Okay, let's look at the hard camera here. The X Champion, Sonny. Desire, let I, you need just settle down, okay? Just settle down, okay? Want to talk about your title match next week on this program against Amazing Red? Let's forget about any of the s- who run around ringside here. Whoa. Amazing Red. There's a lot going on here, Tony. Jesus. Uh, I don't remember this spot. I don't remember this at all. I remember doing something backstage. It's coming. Jesus. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't remember getting back in the ring. God almighty. Where did they get Goldilocks anyway? Dying days of WCW. Really? Was she with us in dying days of WCW? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. No. I don't, the yeah. The, the hat. Shit, man. The hat gimmick. I don't know. Nobody was watching WCW in 2001, but you, well, yeah, boy, and you blocked it all out and I had to watch it. Yeah. You <laughs> I were, was you, forced you, to, you were paid to. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was the, like, it was like robot chicken. It. Hey, over the years, since now we've exposed you as being uh, the worst wheel man in the history of the business, which oh, stop, is probably stop a it. t-shirt over at lowestrules.com by now. Yeah. Uh, hypothetically, uh, how many cars did you wreck for Turner over the years? Uh, none. Wait, 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 uh, wait, hang on now. You drove cars with them from 1990 mm-hmm. to 91 to 92 to 93 to 94 to 95 to 96 to 97 to 98 to 99 to 2000 to 2001. Zero wrecks, zero claims, zero incidents. Uh, a none that I can remember. And you had a rental car for AEW one time and wrecked it? Uh, yeah. God damn. I'm older now. Jeez, okay, I'm, a, I'm a senior citizen Christ. motherfucking driver. No shit. Okay. I can't drive a car. My wife can't ride a bicycle. What the fuck? We've learned. But 
I didn't marry into a stooge family. Got that going for me. You don't know what I married into. You didn't come to my wedding. <laughs> I was there. No, you weren't. You just didn't see me. You said I was in the back. I was in the back drinking. You thinking said, you said throw him in the pool. Throw him in the pool. You said Jobber Shivani. Easy now. <laughs> <laughs> So how about this? America's most wanted, seriously, a great tag team from the era taking on uh, a little throwback action here. The rock and roll express. James storm looked good here, man. Do you think you've gotten your, your $10 worth so far? If you're by, if you're at home watching on pay-per-view, mm. I don't know. Is that what it was? $10 a week? Nine ninety nine. Was it a subscription service or did you have to pay for them a la carte? You had to pay for them a la carte every week, nine ninety nine, so you could pick and choose. Uh, okay. If you got them all, it was uh, forty dollars. Okay. Month. Well, five hundred twenty dollars a year. Okay. Hmm. Uh, this show is really disturbing me. Why you hated that promo of yourself? Yeah, I did. Uh, and what else, by the way, at lowestrules.com, what is sure to be a shirt that is really going to get it really going to hit the, um, mark this week is going to be you a lie when it's referring to Conrad Thompson. I can't wait until we have him draw like a, a cartoon, Tony Khan disappointed next to a wrecked car. No, you can't do that. And you with like a scare. No. no. Okay. okay. All right. Here's what I need. Chris McDonald. I know you're listening. Fuck you, Chris. We need a compilation of wrecked cars merged mm-hmm. with confused old men and <laughs> the curb your enthusiasm closing credits song. Oh, by the way, we have, uh, what I think is the, the best shirt we've ever had. Hashtag M I N L F, which is the way. Tony has described his loving wife, mother. I no longer fuck hashtag mental. You gotta go check it out at lowestrules.com. And we've got a beautiful portrait of cute little biggity bug with Mm. the Facebook font and logo below it that says no Facebook, because we've recently discovered the only difference between bug and Lois, no Facebook. (laughs) Apparently, you know what? I wonder, let's just see hypothetically. Would bug wreck a bicycle? (laughs) Would bug run a car into a wall? I think bug can ride bikes and drive cars about as well as his owners. Maybe my favorite shirt over there. Seriously, though, is I'm a weird, weird guy. Cause it really Mm -hmm. does describe you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this would be a hit around the pool or the redneck Riviera. If you're going to go float down the river first, you get the chicken, then you get the dickin. Mm. Cause it has sort of a uh, KFC uh, styling to it. And if you're just floating down a raft with a bucket of chicken saying life, don't get no better than this. Boom. Uh, maybe a, a barely squeezed orange Shivani shirt, the Whitney yeah. protection program. Yeah. So many good ones over here at lowestrules.com. Check it out. And a shout out to Whitney, our friend. I hope she's doing well. She is. She's experimenting with different hair colors. Uh-huh. She's been quarantining, of course. She's uh, got a shelter in place out in California since early March. Uh-huh. So she's been stuck at home every day with the occasional run outdoors. Um, mm-hmm. But she don't want to catch that Rona. So she's at home and doing her hair and makeup and all that every day and creating new content where you can support her and walk a boom, as Tony likes to say, over at LoisRules.com. Is she quarantined alone in that, in that yeah. home of hers? By the way, huh. she, uh, I feel like I should mention she has an only fans. Oh, at Whitney, right? XXX. It's only $5 a month. If you'd like to go check her out. Uh, I'm, I'm approaching it from an entirely different angle. What, how are you approaching it? Uh, I know what you're, you're thinking about the sex and the voyeurism. I'm just thinking about, she's really a nice girl and I hope she's well. Oh no, no. I know that. That's why I was. I gave her a plug where you could see what she's doing. 
and only fans and mm -hmm. you could uh, support her. Cause it's not like she can go out and work and create content in her traditional way as a, uh, a major starlet and a lot of major motion pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not, they've shut down production, Tony, you see, I'm sure they have because her type of, um, uh, her niche, if you will, would require that you sort of break some quarantine protocol. Right. It, it would, it would close physical contact. Right. She, person, uh, person. Yeah. She's a contact sport athlete <laughs> well, and, she, and she has to have full contact and, uh -huh. or else it's just not really going to be a performance up to snuff for her. So what she's done is she's now she's putting on sort of virtual mm. uh, opportunities for fa fans to participate in over at only fans. Mm -hmm. And she is a great friend of the show. And if you're yeah. stuck at home and want to walk a boom, it's $5 a month. <laughs> five dollars a month oh by the way uh i got mrs thompson a new phone this week really does it have a camera on it where she can go around and stooge off people i haven't seen any pictures from your house or residence okay. besides the ones i took that mm -hmm. you somehow convinced your wife were photoshopped mm -hmm. uh but no we um <laughs> we're pretty we're pretty excited she got the iphone 11 oh good Good. You know why she had to get that? Yeah, because uh, it has like two lenses on it: one for Stooge one, one for Stooge two. The battery quit working on the old one, and that's the way Did it, it really? goes. It's just like I think there's something inside the iPhone where it knows. Yeah, I'm exactly two years old. Time to die. <laughs> I, uh, sort of I, 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 yeah, sort of like you in Stanford. You just have like an <laughs> internal expiration date. <laughs> Yeah, it was April of 1990. Dark side of the ring in the rear view mirror now, Tony. Uh, yeah. How, how many did you see? And what do you think? I've seen, um, I saw the Owen Hart one. I've seen the Road Warriors, Herb Abrams recently. The only one I haven't finished was the New Jack one, I think. Am I missing one? Oh, I saw Dino Bravo. Did you see Benoit? I saw Benoit, yeah. That was the most disturbing one. You probably saw Brawl for All. I didn't see Brawl for All. You didn't miss anything on that one. Really? I saw Bruiser Brody. Oh, that was a good one. That's from season yep. one. I think that's, I think the guys would agree that that's the one they were most passionate about because it was the first one. Right. So the, the first one was, uh, the first one they shot anyway was, mm -hmm. was that one. But I think they started with the match made in heaven, the subject of Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Then the Montreal screw job, then Bruiser Brody, then the Von Eriks, then Gina Hernandez, then the fabulous Moolah. This year it was Benoit, New Jack, Brawl for All, Snooker, Bravo, David Schultz, Herb Abrams, Road Warriors, Owen Hart. Yeah. I have not seen, I've seen them all except, uh, I haven't seen the Montreal screw job because I don't believe it was real. Did you see Schultz? Saul Schultz saw that one. Yes. I haven't seen Snuka. Oof. Uh, Snuka's bad. Snuka's a tough watch. Is it? Okay. But I think the toughest, you know, was Owen. Owen was hard to watch. Yeah. Man. There you yeah. see, uh, the mayor of Applebee's, Alex Skipper. <laughs> and we got people coming in the ring. Oh, who's it? Is that Christopher Daniels? No, no, that's, uh, a former Wolfie D Wolfie D yeah, he, but he's doing, he does a different character here. I forget his name. Let me figure this so out. After, so uh, very quickly after the, uh, I watched the Owen Hart one slash, I guess let's see who that is. Mm. After I watched the Owen Hart episode, I, I went back and watched the part of the pay-per-view. Oh, well, if you watched it on the network, they've clipped all that out. They have. However, I, Right after that, Jeff Jarrett came to the ring with Deborah. Van, Val Venus came to the ring with Nicole Bass. That was the next match scheduled. And if you watch that match, you still see Owen's blood on the side of the ring, which is really fucking creepy. Can you? I mean, I mean really creepy. With broken boards and all that, it's just hard to watch. Yeah. I've seen, and, I'm saying all that to say, 
well, now that you've seen the majority of the episodes and season two is over, there's a bit of a discussion, you know, will season three happen or not? They don't have it locked in for sure that it's happening. Hypothetically, if it were to happen, is there a subject you'd like to see? Uh, I don't know what, what, what's the criteria for dark side of the ring? Is it murder? Is it death? Uh, I don't know what, what's, what's the criteria for dark side of the ring? All right, it's it's whatever you want, Tony. I'm just asking what you'd be entertained okay. with. You know, well, fuck, I mean, me, I guess you could you could you could talk about the the steroid scandal, right? That's what you, that's one you want. No, it, am I the one picking them now? Am I like the executive producer of this shit? Yeah, I'm asking. Okay, who was the who was the famous doctor with Vince? Uh, Zahorian. Zahorian, yeah, the doctor of the Zahorian stuff may. May be very interesting. Oh, here we go. Let's go. Track it. In the back. Oh. Yeah, uh. thank you very much, David Crockett and Johnny Weaver. I know the rundown was big, but Mr. Russo, I know there's a big match you want to add to the rundown next week. It is a big match. I'm listening to my friend Jeff's bile all night about he wants to straighten things out. No problem, Jeff. You got your belt. That's what you wanted. How about putting it on the line against Raven next week, Jeff? Do you have the balls or are you... Not, not next week. Tonight, not next week. Jeff Jarrett, I want the title, and I want it now. And if you got any kind of balls, and I mean any kind of... Oh, 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 oh. I think there's your answer. Yeah, he's, he's got, got big ones. He's got damn big ones. He's got he's from the SCX locker room. And look at he's been leveling Raven right now. Look at Jarrett clean house. Oh, man. Raven. So there you go. That's going to be uh, your final appearance on NWA TNA. Mm-hmm. One and done a big promo, little, uh, scat at the ring. And then the final interview. I really liked that line. I was proud of that line. When you referred to them as Johnny Weaver and David Crockett. Yeah. Cause that was ad lib. And I can't remember, you know, they say I, 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 Alvarez said, I, uh, forgot some of my lines. I, I probably did. I just. I don't know. Talent wants to know you're a big fan of the Hardy's work in the WWE. Were you a big fan of their work in TNA? I didn't. I, the only, the, you know, the only thing I watched of the Hardy's TNA was that, that famous match between sting and Jeff Hardy that, you yeah. know, when Jeff was messed up. So that's the only thing I've seen. Richard Clark wants to know, did you get in trouble for saying the words tits and ass? No. Scott wants to know those necklaces. What the fuck? No, those, I still have those necklaces. K will wants to know, why didn't you wear a suit? We all know you had that sweet WCW money. You a lot. <laughs> you say you don't, uh, by 2003, uh, I no longer had that sweet WCW money. My, uh, my contract ran out, uh, in 2000, 2002 in November. Wayne wants to know how much MILF trim did you get looking like a midlife crisis guy Fieri? And why is the answer all of it? <laughs> Frank Smith wants to know if you took that mid forties, Harry box to flavor town. <laughs> Jordy wants to know what the fuck is up with that shirt. The Hink <laughs> wants to know what's the difference between playing a heel in TNA being versus being a babyface commentator in WCW. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. Christian wants to know Wayne, or I'm sorry. <laughs> Christian wants to know why was Tony in full on Dante from Kirk's uh, clerk's cosplay. And then he mentioned something about being his day off and he's not supposed to be there. It's a deep mm. cut, but it's a good one. Uh, Wayne St. Nick wants to know out of all the TNA guys you saw in the locker room, who had the best hog. <laughs> Alex wants to know who are your favorite knockouts to talk to in the makeup chair. You see what you've done to my life. Steven wants to know what was the backstage atmosphere like compared to when WCW was going down the drain. Mm, RJ, it was about, to, about the same. RJ wants to know what will it take for you to highlight your hair and goatee again? Mm. Well, I do highlight my goatee. I, I, 
But what, what do you think? Do you think blonde hair would be good again? No, don't do that. Okay. Uh, stop. How about a how about a tattoo? Yes. Do I've, been it. Get, I've been considering a tattoo. Do it Mike Tyson style around your face. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. And let it and have it and be like, uh, oh no, you know what? Um, let's do like an Asian tattoo. Those are kind of popular. You could do like an Asian writing tattoo, like a symbol. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you could just have it be, you know, like um, Avis. What is? We could do like Avis in Asian fonts. Jesus. What? Jeremy wants to know who wins in a fight: fifteen duck-sized Mike Tanays or one Mike Tanay-sized duck. <laughs> Would you read that again? <laughs> Who wins in a fight? 15 duck sized Mike Tanay's or one Mike Tanay sized duck. Who sent that out? Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, you need some help. You need some, you need some intervention. Bless your heart. Bo- uh, Boston Tony wants to know why does Tony look like he bought a ticket to the show? Malcolm wants to know what's with the guy Fieri wardrobe. Rick Jimenez wants to know, does Guy Fieri know that Tony got in his closet? <laughs> Owen wants to know, holy shit, did Lois let you out of the house looking like this? <laughs> Paul wants to know, I need to know the story behind the ice Tony is rocking and if he would be willing to buy more ice in the future. I got it. Okay. I got it. What? I got it. Archon wants to know, who picked out that awful bowling shirt? Justin wants to know, who dressed you? Dennis wants to know who was in that stall. <laughs> Ryan Scott wants to know hypothetically, if Tony could go back in time and dock with doc Brown, would he slap his former self and say, don't do it, man. Or what if he had <laughs> stuck, stuck around and had a cup of coffee in TNA. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I would have slapped myself. Dan says, love the hair and shirt. What would we have to do to get you to do your hair like that again? Yeah. Phil wants to know, was there anybody on the roster that Tony wanted to tussle with? Frank wants to know if Whitney Wright invited you on a glass bottom boat ride, would you go? No. <clears throat> no. No. <clears throat> no. I mean, listen, there was a lot of good questions here and you, you almost answered none of them. <sighs> Tony, uh, yes. I feel like you're more depressed than when we started. Yeah, I sure am. That was uh, that was a uh, a look back in time that was not good. But uh, we're not going to uh, finish here with TNA and Impact. We still got a lot more to go uh, during the course of the year, don't we? We do, and that's what I'm really excited about because over at AdFreeShows.com. We're going to do something kind of special very recently. Uh, I guess, gosh, about a week ago, uh, it, it came out that someone had found old footage from 1988, where the Charlotte police department played a charity basketball game against the legends of the NWA. So you've got all the stars of Jim Crockett promotions, sting Lex Luger, dusty Rhodes, all playing basketball for charity against the Charlotte PD. And Tony and I are going to watch that and do alternate commentary only over at adfreeshows.com. Of course, we've got two great bonus, uh, shows that have also aired at patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And next week, right here on the show, we're going to watch a little more TNA. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with uh, what we're doing with TNA and we'll probably watch some more of this in the future, but next week, a little more this time, we're going to go to 2004. And uh, going to see a pretty special and important moment for impact. And this is probably, uh, the last we'll see of, of heel Tony Schiavone, unless you do something stupid on Wednesdays, which I hope you don't, I hope we can continue to like you because I've enjoyed liking you. Thank you. I've enjoyed liking you too. But Tony, I feel like when I look at my clock right now, it's, uh, it's about that time, my friend. Well, thank you very much, Conrad. And thanks everybody so much for all those dumb mother. Fucking questions, what's wrong with you? This is Tony Schiavone saying, you've seen me as a heel for the one and only time. Unless you really know me, then you know I am a heel. Thanks for being with us on What Happened When. We drop on Wednesdays on Westwood One. But don't forget, everybody, we drop Mondays exclusively on Patron.
patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com. <laughs>